Okay, so Joshua Sorrentino is a design director at Square, and he's also worked for a lot of different startups. He has over 15 years of experience working as a product designer. He advises for Andreessen Horowitz. He works as an advisor for um, a startup in San Francisco currently, but I know that you've advised for a lot of other companies as well. And he's kind of like on the edge of like business and design and also design leadership. So he's here to answer your questions because you guys have a lot of them. But we'll start with all the ones that people um, put on Slido. And I'll kind of stay to the side and let you take the lead and I'll just point us towards the questions that are asked the most frequently. So. Cool. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for doing this, Andy. Uh, it's been amazing to watch this yeah. group grow. Thank you. This, thank you. This, I think this is the biggest uh, Cascade event I've been to so far. Wow. You haven't been here in a while. Oh, right? really? But absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I remember when I was like 30-ish. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we, it changes. It, it, you know. I guess. Thank you guys. Thank everybody. I'll thank everybody for coming out. But okay, so we'll start off with the first question, which is, how do you measure quality in product design? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, and I think there's, there's a few different ways you can measure quality in product design. First of all, it depends on what you're measuring. That's the first thing you have to determine. And there are certain things that uh, many of us probably use for usability testing or uh, other types of uh, qualitative testing. There's also quantitative testing. But I think there's this, uh, this concept in the valley that everything has to be tested. Everything you design, everything you develop has to be tested. And I think there are certain things that you just go off of gut instinct and you don't necessarily have to uh, measure with any type of data. You just know in your gut that it's the right decision. And I think companies uh, need to come around to that concept. I think when you have good taste, it's easier for you to understand that sometimes good taste is the only factor that comes into play. And I think people who don't necessarily have good taste don't always see that. And so they ask for data to back up every decision you make. And so I guess my answer is, it really depends on what it is you're testing. Um, if, it's, if it's a user flow, you can test that with A-B testing. If it's uh, you know, a copy change, you can test that with some type of qualitative testing, watching users walk through a flow and seeing if they understand the copy and are able to execute on the actions. Uh, but then there's other decisions that just come down to taste and it will be difficult to measure. And would we follow that up with how do you measure the success of a design? Yeah, I think that's, that's a pretty similar question. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say every, everything you design even if you're making a decision based solely on taste, you should have some sort of goal in mind. Uh, you shouldn't design just for the sake of designing. You should, you should have some type of goal, whether it's to delight the user or whether it is to uh, increase interaction. And when you know what that goal is, it's easy to measure the success and whether you hit that goal. Good, good answer. Okay, so now we have a question that's more relating to career and um, about like, you know, junior designers. And um, so when you meet with a junior designer, what are some traits that stand out to you that makes you want to hire them or makes maybe makes you want to invest more energy into getting to know them? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I actually really enjoy hiring junior designers. Um, I like giving people a chance and a shot. I think I was there in my career at one point and I look back, I'm like, I can't believe I got, I can't fucking believe I got hired by the first company I worked for. Uh, I remember my first six months, I was like, they're gonna fire me, they're gonna fire me. Uh, and the, the thing that I look back was I, I was very determined to make it work and figure out everything I needed to learn to be good at my job. And I look for that in junior designers. That's the number one thing. It's ambition. And 
Uh, I think there's some other questions about this later, but uh, one way that I can determine ambition is looking at their portfolio, looking at their website, seeing how much they put into it. Uh, you can tell when somebody has spent their time to uh, showcase their work in a meaningful way. Okay, and we'll move that up to mid-level designers. Um, do you have any job search tips for somebody in their mid, the mid part of their career, maybe like two to four years into the career? Uh, definitely networking. That has helped me a lot. Um, so you're you in the should, right place, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. you, should, you should always be reaching out, meeting new people, having coffees with other designers, uh, even people who aren't designers, product leaders, you should also be giving back to the community at that point. You should start to try to give back to the community. Um, and that will open up a lot of opportunities. Um, I think something else that I realized as a designer was I had worked in so many different industries. And th the advantage to that was I could join any new industry and probably start executing on design fairly quickly and get ramped up to speed. But... As you progress in your career, it helps to specialize or focus on a particular industry, whether that is social media or whether it is fintech or whether it is some other vertical, uh, because there is inherent knowledge that you will have coming into your next company. That's a really good tip. So, um, okay. So how do you view designers who jump from company to company? year to year for learning and growth purposes. So they say as an example, going from, I'm not sure what the time frame is, what you're looking at, like a year or two years, or maybe just moving from Uber to Airbnb to Square. Um, well, let's just look at, at maybe just one year, one year increments. How would you view a designer who's only stayed at a company for a year at a time? Um, you know, sometimes it can be a red flag. I think if, mm -hmm. if, if you're staying at a company one year and it's been three times in a row, that can be a red flag. I think two years is a much safer bet. Most of my career has been two and three year gigs. Uh, it, that's pretty common in the Valley. I think things move so fast here uh, and really in the tech industry in general that it's accepted people are going to move around a lot quicker than an industry that's more established and has been around a lot longer. Uh, but it can be a red flag. And what are some advice? What is some advice that you have for junior designers who are starting to? They want to kickstart their career, and they have limited experience, but they have a lot of ambition. Where should they start? Be a sponge. You yeah. you should read everything you can. You should ask every question you can. There will be people who won't respond to your emails. Don't sweat it. Email other people. There are there are many designers in this industry that want to help and that want to. Uh, really mentor and grow design talent and you you just have to keep looking for those people and uh, I think oh, I actually something. Twitter is a great place you dropped that like three times now <laughs> uh, I think Twitter is a great place uh, that's I wouldn't be in San Francisco if it wasn't for Twitter I followed a lot of design leaders uh, back when I was kicking off the product design portion of my career. Um, Twitter has lost some of its value now. There's a lot more noise on Twitter than there used to be, but I still think it's a valuable place to to absorb knowledge. Um, yeah. Okay. And now that we've talked about juniors and mid-level designers, we'll bring it up to seniors. So um, you wrote an article in 2016 and, and a podcast on design leadership and how the landscape has evolved in that time frame, but has anything changed since 2016? And what are the new challenges for senior designers? Yeah, I think, I think we still face many of the same challenges as designers. I think there are more companies that are accepting the idea that design needs to exist at the top level of the organization. Um, in, in the article you're referencing, I talked about how uh, the role of the CMO didn't exist before the late 80s, early 90s. 
And now you look around and companies have a CMO. It's just normal. It's like, duh, of course you have a CMO. And if you look at design, uh, there were no CDOs. There were no CXOs. And you're starting to see companies realize that they need that design voice in the company from, from the top level. But it takes time. The CMO didn't become commonplace until you know a decade later, two decades later. Uh, it's it's going to take time. So we're still facing some of the same challenges where you'll see design report to product in many companies, which isn't always the wrong decision. Um, it's just we're not at the point that every company has a CDO. Uh, one thing I've realized, though, is as you... As you grow in any role in an organization, it, it isn't even so much how much do you know about design or how much do you know about marketing or engineering. It's how much can you impact that organization? How much can you bring things together and, and rally people together to accomplish the goals of that organization? And so I think designers... At times, we stay in our little bubble, our little design bubble, and we have to get better at uh, integrating with the rest of the organization and understanding how to define and meet goals. So more leadership is what you're saying. Yeah. Management, business experience. And so Absolutely. what about, so here's a question for, um, for some people, maybe they don't want to be a manager. Maybe they just want to design and work in front of the computer and solve challenges. How, what is, like, for the long term, does that seem like a reasonable route? I feel like Mark Zuckerberg right now. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like some water? <laughs> He's like... Um, yeah, so not so not a manager. Okay, yep. so I'm a, I am a say that I am a designer. I've worked for in the field for, like, 12 years, and I don't necessarily want to become a manager but I want to continue to do product design, but there's all these people yeah. coming into the field. So a bigger company is probably a good place for someone like that. You'll find that big companies often have uh, IC roles that have comparable levels to the managers with the same amount of experience. Uh, if you look at Facebook, Google, uh, Square, uh, we work hard to make sure that you can stay in IC if that's your preference. There is still a certain point that... IC, you say? Uh, sorry, individual contributor. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, there's still a certain point that, you know, you can't really advance further without becoming a manager, but it's gotten better that you can, you can become a principal designer in many organizations now, or uh, it's staff designer is another... A term that you often hear and uh, really the bigger companies have figured that out I think smaller companies still expect you to to grow rather quickly so a principal product designer is like another route rather than becoming a design director or manager absolutely okay uh, right. it's a yep. shameless plug I'm actually looking for an individual yeah. contributor Tell them. who I consider will will consider an equal in in the team that I'm on. So they will be focused on uh, executing the, the actual design work, and I will be focused on managing the team, interacting with other teams, making sure that we're all syncing up and meeting the, the goals of the company. Awesome. I'll Let me know. I'll send out an email. No, no problem. OK, so I think that these questions are all really good, but I well, actually, no, there's one more that I would like, want to ask, and then I want to turn the mic over to the audience, because we want to hear your voices in contrast. But um, say that I'm joining a new company, whether I'm a junior, mid-level, or a senior designer, how, what are the first things that I should do as a designer joining a new company? Uh, again, it's, it's about being a sponge, but I think... Uh, something that really helps, it, de it depends on the size of the company, but I think this applies to all companies. Talk to a lot of people in the organization, and if you have a good manager, they're going to set up a lot of one-on-ones with other people in the, in the organization. Uh, that didn't always happen for me, <laughs> and I would have to reach out to the sales team, reach out to the support team, ask them, what are some of the challenges you're facing? And once you start doing that, you immediately, as, as a designer, start recognizing 
things that you could bring to the table as solutions to solve some of their pain points. Um, I think something else that helps is understanding the, the company's mission and some of the business goals that are, are accompanying that mission. Um, th those things all together will, will make you an effective designer early on. And don't be afraid to ask questions. I think a lot of designers, uh, I have fallen in this, this trap before, are afraid to ask questions because you're afraid to show how junior you are or how little you know. Uh, and people understand, they, they understand that you may have switched industries or that you may not have designed this way before and they will help you. Okay, um, well, we have a lot of really good questions here, but I was wondering if we should turn the mic over to you guys or should we continue to ask? Maybe somebody else can ask. No. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should I just continue to ask the questions on the screen? Huh? Well, you already did on Slido. Well, I'm trying to think of what, okay, here's one. What, did, what was the banana bread versus rye bread? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> banana bread versus rye bread. Well, I picked the next question. Yeah, I, I voted on that one. Um, <laughs> definitely rye bread. I don't want fruit in my bread. I don't. I don't want like fruit cake or anything like carrot that. Carrot cake no. is so good, though. Yes. Okay. That's carrots a vegetable. <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead and ask a question. Yeah, because we have a few, we have like a few more minutes, and we want to hear your voice. Hi. Um, so earlier, when you were talking about how you evaluate designers when you hire them, you were talking about being able to really clearly tell if somebody has put a lot of effort into their portfolio. Um, something that immediately came to mind for me was, well, you don't know what you don't know. So if you're a fresh graduate out of design school and you have a portfolio that you think is really great, um, but in the eyes of somebody who has 15 years of experience, well, you don't put in very much effort. How do you then, um, what's your criteria for evaluation then? Because um, at our company, something that we always talk about is like, how do we balance the hire for culture fit versus the hire for portfolio? Um. Okay, I think there was, there was a couple of questions in there. The, f the first question, I think, is how do, you, how do you make sure that somebody understood that what they needed to do to make their portfolio successful? And I think, I think the, the answer to that is uh, sometimes you know, I mean, you're going to, it depends on the company, but you're going to get hundreds of portfolios that come in. You're going to take, you know, the top 20% and you're going to set them aside and you're going to have phone screens with them. When you have a phone screen or a one-on-one -on -one chat with somebody, you, you will start to understand the thought that they put into that portfolio. You can ask questions like, did you think about this? Uh, why, why is the font, you know, Comic Sans, and you might realize they didn't know any better, uh, and you give them the benefit of the doubt there. You might realize they didn't even attempt to do their due diligence, and then that becomes a red flag, right? Um, and I think, what, what was the second part of your question? Uh, how you balance the choice, or how you balance hiring for culture fit versus hiring for a good portfolio? Um, I, th I think, you know, both are important. Um, if, if somebody has a very good portfolio, they're a very good designer, but they're a terrible culture fit, it, it'll either become a negative in the sense that other people don't want to work with that person, or they will be ineffective because they're not able to uh, integrate with the team. Uh, we, we actually have those criteria, and when we have a day full of interviews, we will... Uh, sit down afterward and talk about each of the categories and there's more categories than just those two uh, and sort of you know discuss how we felt that person was in, in a particular category to come to a consensus. Okay, um, actually we are pretty much out of time so I'm yeah but however we have one more minute okay one more question right up here in the front in the way front um, the lady with the striped shirt and the red jacket. 
There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you work to employ different methods to hire people who are diverse and and creating a team that fosters that? Yeah, I think I think that's a great question. Uh, it's probably one of the most challenging things that uh, companies have faced in the recent few years. Uh, it's been primarily white males that have been hired into these tech companies, and it's a, it's a big problem. Uh, one thing that I am trying to do with my team personally is uh, make sure that we have multiple points of view. And if you look at if you look at the company's goals, it is to achieve uh, you know international adoption. When you start to realize that's a goal and you look around a room and it's all white males, you realize how are we going to achieve international adoption if we don't even have more perspectives, for instance, um, uh, to be able to accomplish that. So I think it's, you can, you can do it in a way that actually even aligns with the company's mission and not even so much for the sake of doing it, if that makes sense. Um, and I think it, it just takes self-awareness from everybody in the company to, to make that a priority. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs>